Statistics and Excel Uniform Distribution Dice Example. Got data? Let's get stuck into it with Statistics and Excel. Actually, we'll be looking at OneNote here, but we'll be talking about Excel. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, we're in the icon left-hand side, OneNote Presentation 1510 Uniform Distribution Dice tab. We've also been uploading transcripts to OneNote so that you can go into the View tab, Immersive Reader Tool, change the language if you so choose, being able to either read or listen to the transcript in multiple different languages using the timestamps to tie in to the video presentations. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts, a must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six pack like shape which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. OneNote desktop version here. In prior presentations, we've thought about how we can represent and describe different data sets, both mathematically using calculations such as the average, the mean, the median, the quartiles, and so on, and pictorially using box and whiskers as well as histograms. The histograms often being what we visualize when we're thinking about the distribution of the data and then using terms to describe the distribution of the data in the histogram, such as skewed to the right, skewed to the left, and so on. What we would like to think about now is the families of curves and formulas that we can put together that can often uh, characterize certain data sets. And if we can do that, if we can represent a data set with some kind of curve, some kind of formula, it gives us more predictive power uh, over that data set. So that's kind of the goal that we would like to have. If we can say, hey, this data set looks like it can be characterized at least approximately with some kind of line or some kind of curve that we have a formula for, that would be a useful tool to have. Now, the first one that we're gonna look at, the first family, of curves will be the uniform distributions. It's gonna be the easiest one because it's basically a straight line. So when we said uniform distributions, you might've imagined that we're gonna kind of distribute out uniforms for the accounting instruction statistics course and you're gonna get a uniform or something. No, we're talking about uh, uniform distribution as a family of, of, uh, of a curve basically representing data all right so we're gonna be thinking about dice rolls here to get an idea of what this will look like so let's say we have a die and the die has six sides to it and if we were to roll the die a thousand times and what would be the the likelihood that any one number whether that number be a one two three up to six what's the likelihood that we roll uh how many ones or what's the likelihood to roll a one each time, for example? Well, it would be one over six, which would be the 16.66 on and on. So if I rolled it a thousand times, what would be basically the expected uh, value that you would have for any one number? It would be this times 1,000, right? Times a thousand. So you would expect there'd be 166.66 and so on of each individual number 
of one through six. That would be kind of our visualized outcome in our mind. Now note that this visualized outcome is just a model. We're just, we're coming up with a model that hopefully provides us some predictive power, but of course is not perfect in real life, which is clearly described to us by the fact that we have an unwhole number here. So it would be impossible for our predictive model to actually become true because we can't, there's no way that we're gonna get uh, 0.67 of a one that, or a two that we roll, right? We can't roll it 0.67 times. But you can see that the model gives us predictive power uh, over what what, poss what the chances are in the future. So if we take then that data and and I was to graph it or plot it out, if I look at the dice numbers, there's six numbers on the die, one through six, and if I rolled the die a thousand times, each one of those numbers we would expect to come up to around 166.67. So our, our kind of perfect model that we have in our head, which is too perfect because it doesn't take into effect account the randomness because this is basically a sample instead of the entire population of dice rolls, which we imagine to be like an infinite number of dice rolls, uh, it would look like this. Now, if I was to graph that in a histogram, then we've got the dice one through six and the expected roll, it would be just a straight line, right? We, we would expect all of them to be 167 across the board. And obviously we have now a straight line. And notice that the straight line, you might say that the uniform, that's what the uniform distribution will be. You might say, well, look, there's only one of those, it's not really a family of curves. But obviously if we rolled the die for some other number other than a thousand times, if we rolled the die, you know, 200 times, we would expect the outcome to be 200 times the point uh, 1.66666 on and on. So it would be 33. So the so it's actually kind of a family of curves because the straight line is up here. If we rolled it 200 times, it would have a straight line at the 33. So these are a family of curves that which are basically straight lines, which are just straight lines, right? Which are the uniform distribution uh, that, that, that we would have. That would be our expected outcome formula for it f of x equals c, we're going to have the same the same outcome because it's uniform. Nice, easy uh, equation for us. Our, our predictions are, are nice and, and easy, although they're not going to be perfect because in real life, there's going to be the randomness involved. Now, if we were to approximate what actually would happen if I rolled the dice a thousand times, uh, you could do this in Excel and you could do it by by using the random number generator, uh, which would look like this, random between, and then the bottom number would be one, top number would be six. Uh, my voice cracked there. I'm just gonna copy, and if we copied that down a thousand times, I don't think I added all thousand, I only went down to here. But if you do this in the Excel worksheet that we will have as well, you would have a thousand numbers that are approximating, that are randomly generated as a dice rule would be random in theory, right? Uh, one through six. So the likelihood of, of this one coming out a, a two was, you know, one out of six, right? So, so we rolled a two, then we rolled a five, then we rolled a three, then we rolled a six, then we rolled a one, a one, a four, and so on and so forth. So if we take then that data, we could say, let's do it this way. We can say, okay, now we've got the dice one through six. We've got the ex, uh, the expected rolls were even. This is what we expected to happen, but this is what actually happened. Now this actual data we're, we're pulling in uh, from, from our data set over here by basically counting the numbers that are coming up. And the formula in Excel would look something like this. We're gonna say equals count if brackets. We're gonna be picking up our entire range. You can see it goes down to a thousand in, in Excel. And then we want the criteria. So we want you to count every number in this range if it has Q2, which represents this number one. So if you find this number one in the range, count it. And it says that that happened 182 times. 
And then we have how many twos happened? 170, 163s, 164 fours, 149 fives, and 175 sixes. And we can see that those add up to a thousand, which makes sense because we rolled it a thousand times. That's kind of our check figure. The difference then, this is what we expected to happen. This is what actually happened. So there's a difference of 15. It's pretty close, but not exact. A difference of three, a difference of seven on the positive side, a difference of three, a difference of 18, a difference of eight, and so on. So then if I was to plot this, I can say this is the actual outcome, right? So the expected was a straight line, but the actual outcome is not exactly a straight line. But if I was to try to predict what's going to happen in the future, it's useful for me to be able to use a function of basically just the straight line, right? I'm going to use, if I'm going to say what's going to happen in the future, well, this looks like it can be approximated pretty closely with the straight line. So that's why the straight, that's why that's going to give us some predictive power about what will happen in the future. If I wasn't able to do that, if I was to say, hey, look, this doesn't look like it conforms to anything. It's just the, the numbers are coming up randomly, which could very well happen in different circumstances. Some data sets might not be able to be represented with some kind of, of line or approximating a formula. And if that's the case, then, then it's going to be a lot more complex for us to, to use past data to project future data into the future. But if we're saying, hey, look, this looks like it approximates some kind of actual curve, in this case, a straight line, then we can use the formula to help give us some predictive power of what's going to happen uh, in the future. So notice that this histogram up top, uh, I made with a bar chart, and we could make the, make the histogram as well with a histogram in Excel. If we do it with a histogram, the histogram in Excel is going to try to give us a top and bottom number, but you can see there's a there's one uh, it's one number distance apart. So we, so you can use either of those form those uh, charts to, in essence, get, get the same uh, results. So if you want to check that out in Excel, we'll have that in Excel. Now in Excel, if also you wanted to run this experiment, this experiment multiple times and say, okay, that's pretty close right here to the straight line. What if I did it four times? Uh, then and I can run multiple experiments and say, okay, are, are all of them going to come out similar? Similar. So we rolled, once again, we did the, the random number generator between one through six as if we rolled the dice a thousand times, four times, right? So again, this is what, what I, apparently they used to do for for uh, the in the universities. You know, if you worked in there, they had, you know, people just rolling dice all day uh and, and they're part of the union job and stuff but now we have the computer doing that you know it took a long time but that but now the dice rollers are out of there and we just we generate it with a computer now so then if we if we made our our histograms this way you could see again it, it's approximating a straight line this is the first uh results this is then the second results it's not exactly the same of course because there's randomness in it, but you can see it still kind of approximates the straight line. Here's the third one of a thousand rules. So they're all different, but they, they all, you know, approximate basically that straight line. And the idea, if you think about the sampling concept, would be that if I was to roll this an infinite amount of times, which would be the entire population, then it would, in essence, be, you know, a straight line representation uh, meaning you would expect the outcome to be one over six, right? For each uh, roll times inf an infinite number of times, right? Uh, but because we have a sample of of the data, it's not gonna it's not gonna come out perfect, but we can approximate it uh, with our f formula, and so that's the easiest kind of formula to approximate, right? It's a straight line. We can see we can see that now. Obviously, if we can do a similar thing with curves, which we'll talk about in future presentations, representing the data with a more complex formula, but still a formula so that we can make predictions uh, with, with, a, with a formula, then that would be great as well. And we'll get into some of those in future presentations.